AI is taking the internet by storm and you too can harness the power of AI by creating cool effects like this AI graffiti effect. I'll show you how I shot it, how I edited it all together and I'll give you one bonus tip that will really help to sell this effect. Plus, this bonus tip is one that you can apply to a variety of different effects. The settings for something like this are super important. But first, I shot one single shot of me walking past the graffiti and then I walked off to the side and back behind the camera. I let the camera run for another three to four minutes because I knew that I wanted to create a time lapse to show the clouds moving really fast. You'll want to use a fixed white balance and manual exposure settings so that your color temperature and your exposure doesn't change mid shot. Manual focus is also a good idea to stop your camera from focusing on something else accidentally during the shot. We're going to use an AI tool called DALI to generate new frames to replace the graffiti in the shot. But first, we need to prep the timeline and the clips in Final Cut Pro. You need to make sure that you have all the different elements that make up the shot. In other words, me walking across the frame, the graffiti and the time-lapse sky on separate layers. I'll cut out the part where I walk through the frame and that is about four seconds long. So let's make it exactly four seconds using the shortcut Control D and typing in four seconds, zero, zero frames and hitting return. Next, I'll take the rest of my clip and I'll hit Command R to retime the clip. I'll click on the drop down arrow here and select custom. I'll select duration and type in exactly four seconds. I'll hold down option and click and drag to copy the clip of me. On the new copy, I'll go to the beginning and hit Shift H to create a hold frame. I'll drag this to extend the clip and I'll set the duration to four seconds as well. Let's organize these different clips so that we know what's going on. I'll right click and rename each one. So we have the hold frame, the clip of me and the time lapse. I want the clip of me on top of the hold frame and I want the time lapse clip underneath the hold frame. I'll select the hold frame and hit Option G to create a compound clip. I'll explain why creating a compound clip at this stage is important later on. Next, I'll go over to my effects browser, search for draw mask, and I'll add that to the compound clip of the hold frame. I'll select the time lapse clip of the clouds and the clip of me, and I'll hit V to disable those clips for now. Then I can draw a mask around everything that remains static. So in other words, the ground and the building. I'll drop the feather to around minus 20, and then I'll select the time-lapse clip and hit V to re-enable it. Now, if I scrub through the timeline, I have my time-lapse of the clouds happening behind my hold frame. I'll re-enable the clip of me, and I'll add another draw mask effect to that clip. I'll go frame by frame to mask me out. It might take some time, so I'll speed that up. Once that's done, I am on a totally separate layer like this. There are some other ways to do it, and I spoke about that in this video, which I'll link down below. Or you can check out a paid plugin called Keeper, which I'll also link to down below. Now that I have those three elements on separate layers, I can export a clean frame that I'll use in conjunction with AI to generate new frames. So let's click here to put my playhead at this frame, and then I'll export this frame as a JPEG by clicking on the share icon, selecting save current frame, and under settings, I can select JPEG. Then I'll head over to DALI from OpenAI and I'll upload the frame. I'll choose the generation frame area. And then with the eraser tool selected, I'm going to erase the area that I want to replace. So I'll paint over this graffiti, making sure it's all selected. Then I'll go over to the text box at the top and type in what I want DALI to generate. Let's go with Punk Rabbit Graffiti and hit generate. DALI does its thing and gives me a few options which I can scroll through here. I like this one, so I'll go over and hit download. Now, if the clip that you want to apply this effect to is moving either on a gimbal or handheld, you'll need to export multiple frames to create this effect. You can do that by pressing I for the in point and O for the out point, and then exporting that selection as an image sequence. That will export each frame of the video as a separate JPEG file. I would also recommend adding a marker here using the shortcut M so that you know where the in point is for these exported frames. In my case, I was shooting on a tripod so I can get away with just a single frame export. So I'll head back to DALI and I'll hit undo and then search for something else like colorful text graffiti. I can repeat this process for as many frames as I like. I did it for 12 frames. Next, open up the hold frame and import all of those frames into Final Cut Pro. With them all selected, hit Ctrl D to change the duration and I'll set this duration to six frames and hit return. I'll drag them on top of the hold frame where I want the effect to start 
and I'll extend the last frame to the end of the clip. Then I'll hit B to activate my blade tool and I'll make a cut where the effect is going to start. I'll select the second half of the clip and hit Shift Delete to remove it. If I just hit Delete, I will delete all of the images too. So Shift Delete that and then drop the images down using the shortcut Command Option and the down arrow. That will write the clips to the primary storyline. I'll head over to my Transitions browser and search for Flow and then I can add that Flow Transition in between each of the images. The Flow Transition will morph the one clip into the other. The reason it was so important to create a compound clip at the beginning was so that I could drop these new frames into the compound clip and they would then be affected by the draw mask that was applied to the compound clip. Before I get into the bonus tip, here is the result. When you create these kind of masking effects, most people already know, ah, that was shot on a tripod and multiple clips were involved. But when you use something like a handheld effect to create some movement in the scene, it kind of creates this illusion that it was a moment that was just captured and it wasn't set up on a tripod. It's a small little detail, but it really helps to sell this effect and make it feel a bit more real. So I'll select everything and create a compound clip and then I'll add this handheld effect from my friend Dylan Bates, which I'll link to down below. Final Cut Pro also has its own built-in handheld effect, but Dylan's one is way better. And this is what that looks like. Applying the handheld effect is a simple yet subtle trick that you can use to enhance these kind of visual effect shots. Now that you know how to do that, I'd recommend watching this video next on how to create a mask wipe transition.